Hey friends, my inspiration for this video was because I got the Aldi flyer for the week and one of their Aldi finds was their line of enamel cast iron. It's an item that they bring in probably every two to three months. They'll bring in one or two pieces from this line and I love it. So it sounded like a great excuse to make a, you know, a couple dishes that utilized my enamel cast iron. I love this stuff so much. It's so versatile in the kitchen. The whole thing, including the lid, can go in and out of the oven. It's heavy duty, it's easy to clean. I love this stuff. Now, cast iron enamel cookware can get pricey quick. And I know for me, my TikTok feed is always full of Lecrisse content videos. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cookware, but so far out of my budget. <laughs> and so to the rescue comes Aldi's Crafted Cookware. This is not a sponsored video in any way, by the way. If they wanted to sponsor me, that'd be awesome, but I just really love this stuff. And it is so affordable. This pot is 4.6 quarts, and I think it cost me $25. The equivalent five quart Le Creuset is $400. So am I claiming that the Crofton line is gonna be quite the same quality as the Le Creuset? No, but I mean at, what, that's like six or 7% of the price, and it is way more than six or seven percent of the, of the quality like this is still a super quality pot that i expect to last years probably decades i also have this one it was also listed at 25 but it ended up bringing up at 16.99 i think it might have been like a return or an open box or something but love these pieces so i figured it would be fun to show you a couple of the ways that i use these pans in my cooking the meal I'm gonna share tonight uses both of my enamel cast iron pieces. I'll be making some bread and a chicken and potato soup. And the first thing I need to do is make some broth for the soup. So I have my electric pressure cooker here, my Instant Pot. I also have here the leftovers from a chicken we made earlier this week. Some of the bones that I've already completely pulled the meat off of, I'll throw those in now. And then I'm just gonna spend a minute getting the rest of this chicken off the bones because that's going to go in the soup later. All right, I've got the meat separated. I'm going to put this back in the fridge until I'm ready to use it in a couple hours. I also have this big old bag of veggie scraps in my freezer. I'm a bit behind on broth making since I'm still getting ready to defrost my freezer. It's been forever on my to-do list this uh, past few weeks couple months even. I don't even know. I've lost track of how much time. But anyway, I'm just going to take a, a couple handfuls of my veggie scraps. It's mostly onion skins, carrot ends, uh, pieces of celery, probably some garlic skins in there too. I don't stress about how much I'm adding. I just toss a few handfuls of them in there. Obviously, I still have plenty left and this bag refills quick. Next is water. It's a little bit harder to gauge how much water I'm adding when I've got the little insert in there. So I rotate it, the Instant Pot, so that way I can see the max line right there. Let's see, this is two quarts of water. I'll need a little bit more than that. Usually I can get away with around three-ish quarts of water. And yeah, I'll stop there. That's just over three quarts. And where I stop is I don't fill it up to the max fill line in the Instant Pot. It's the kind of like the halfway point between the little max fill notch there and then the next one down. I know you can't really see it. But that's kind of my limit so I don't overfill it. And then it goes on. I'm putting this in for two hours, but let me show you a neat trick that I learned lately. And a lot of you probably already know this, but uh, when I hit pressure cook, if I hit it for different numbers, I get different time settings. I'm sure there's a way that I could reprogram the broth setting on here to automatically go to two hours. But yeah, now we're at two hours high pressure. Now I'm gonna get some bread dough together really quick since I will be making some rolls in my uh, other enamel cast iron. This is three and a quarter cups of flour. I just added a teaspoon of salt. You could add one pack of yeast to this or I'm using 
two and I'm using two and a half teaspoons because my yeast is a little old, but two and a quarter is what's in one of those little yeast packets. And then because I'm doing a quicker rise, I'm gonna add some sugar to this. It's just two teaspoons of sugar. Get all of that mixed into the flour. This also works as a really great uh, dough to let proof overnight on your counter. You just omit the sugar. This dough recipe is all over the internet, has been super popular for a really long time, but like during COVID is when like it really took off. And then to this mixture, I'm adding one cup and a half cup of very warm water. That gets mixed together. It's gonna be a sticky, shaggy dough and that's okay. Just gonna keep stirring this until all the flour is incorporated. And there's what the dough looks like. I'm gonna cover it and let it rise for an hour, which is conveniently how much time is left on my Instant Pot timer. All right, it's been a bit more than an hour, but that should be okay. Let's see where we're at. That dough has definitely risen a fair bit. Get some flour on my counter because the dough is sticky. I will carefully roll this out. And I wanna cut this into eight, hopefully even sized pieces. This one already looks a lot smaller than this one, but it's okay. We'll just get it as close as we can. That is good enough for me. And then each one of these, I kind of just take and pull the tops and the sides down to underneath. So I kind of get a, a smooth ball. It'll be kind of pinched together on the bottom, but that's okay. do that with all eight of these. I got my eight dough balls formed and I'm gonna let these rest for like 30 minutes. And while that final rise is happening, I'm putting my big round enameled cast iron in the oven uh, to actually preheat with the oven. So I'm setting the oven to 450 and I'm just gonna let this go in the cool oven and warm up with the oven. And that not only gets the cast iron hot, but it also uh, helps prevent it from cracking, from putting a, a cold dish into like a really hot oven. All right, it's been 30 minutes. My balls of dough are all puffed up and I just very, very carefully pulled uh, my enamel cast iron out of the oven. It is very, very hot. So I'm going to carefully transfer my balls of dough into the pan carefully because I don't want them, like I don't want to smash them down and carefully because I don't want to burn myself on this pan. I can hear them sizzling a little bit in there. All right, let's see if I can get this one squeezed gently in there. All right, good enough. <laughs> carefully put the lid back on and then this is going in the oven for 30 minutes while that bread is baking i have my other enamel cast iron on the stove got some oil in there and it is warming up and then to get my soup started i've got an onion a couple carrots and a couple stalks of celery i'll chop these up and put them in the pot to sa start sauteing but of course uh, all of these pieces are going into my freezer bag to make more broth later on. I like to dice my onions up pretty small. My carrots are getting cut into these little uh, half moon shapes. I'm gonna dump these in now so I have a little more room to uh, cut my celery. And then the celery, I'm just cutting right down the stalk. And then the celery gets to join its friends in the pot too. The veggies are a sizzling. The timer for the oven just went off. I'm not taking the bread out yet, but I am taking the lid off and then I'm gonna set the timer for another 10 or 15 minutes. All right, this broth is ready to come out. All right, to start off, I'm just going to remove the insert right out of here. 
you definitely run this through a strainer with a like tighter mesh weave if you wanted to get uh there's just some like you know little bits here and there probably from either the veggies or the chicken but it isn't anything to worry about if you kept it in there i'm gonna get some seasoning on these veggies there's some salt some pepper if it seems like i'm adding a lot that broth is unseasoned so just keep that in mind some garlic powder and yeah, let's get some paprika in there give this a good little stir around i just pulled the bread out it is nice and crispy on the outside it should be nice and fluffy soft inside and it's time to add some broth to this i've added eight cups so far you can see it is this nice beautiful rich color right now i may add more i'm not sure yet any broth i don't use i'll put in the fridge and we'll use it in the next couple days i mentioned that this is a chicken and potato soup so i'm gonna chop up some potatoes i wash these but i'm not worrying about peeling them whenever andrew makes things like this with potatoes he always manages to get them into these really nice little cubes so i'm seeing how well i can replicate that i think he's uh definitely better at it russets are not my favorite potato but this is coming up on the last of the bag and then i got a bag of uh gold potatoes on sale this week I feel like I can never tell how much potatoes I'm using until they're chopped up. Now that these are chopped up, I think I'm absolutely just fine uh, with the three potatoes. So I'll drop these into my soup to cook up. I popped the lid on top of the Dutch oven over here and I'm going to chop up this chicken while the potatoes cook. One of my reasons for cutting my potatoes a little was that so that way they would cook quickly. They have softened quite a bit, so I'm gonna get this chicken added in there, as well as this can of corn because Andrew specifically requested corn. I'm glad I put the amount of uh, broth that I did in there because this is getting full. And I'll give this a couple minutes to heat back up. I gave this a taste and it is absolutely delicious. The only thing that I wanna add is a little, little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I've been really enjoying adding it to soups lately. Give that a little taste now. Mm, that was absolutely excellent. And then the last thing that I'm adding is a cup of half and half. It was actually the, the last of the carton I had. Mix that in. I like how half and half just gives it like a like nice creaminess. I also have a quart of broth set to the side that's going to go in the fridge. If we decide that we want to add more broth later on, like with leftovers or whatever, we can add more. Otherwise, I will cook something else with that. Mmm, that's good. That's really good. I'm going to turn the heat off and this is ready to eat. And there is my delicious soup. Beautiful pile of bread. I actually have one in my uh, hand. And then that quart of broth that's going to go in the fridge. And you can see it's a really deep, rich, lovely color. This is going to be a super delicious meal and i'm definitely really excited to eat it and it just makes me love and appreciate and be so excited about my enamel and cast iron pieces that i have they're so worth to buy for me and here's what those rolls look like on the inside it is super soft on the inside nice and crusty on the outside if you want it them to be a little less crusty uh, it would just be a case of not taking the lid off or cooking them with the lid off for a shorter amount of time mm, wow it's good <laughs> hey friends i wasn't planning on making a second meal for this video but i hadn't started editing the last meal i made so i figured why not throw another one in this is the enameled cast iron piece that i'll be using tonight and I uh, made a pork shoulder in my pressure cooker, so that's just the pressure's releasing. These are the veggies that are going to be going in my meal. I have some oil heating up in my pan over here. So grab my bag for broth. Throw my scraps into the onion. I'm just going to dice up real quick. And 
all this onion is going right into the pan. My onion is starting to sizzle. I'm gonna get this asparagus chopped up. I cut the, the ends off. They tend to be kind of woody, extra fibrous, hard to chew. I don't usually put asparagus or at least not much of it in my bag with my broth just because it can make the broth a little bitter. I do like to put them in my compost though and that will help my garden. So I'm just kind of cutting the asparagus into bite-sized pieces and then tossing it in the pan with the onion. You can also use your asparagus ends to make an asparagus soup. It's not my thing, but it might be yours. My onions and asparagus have been sauteing for about four or five minutes. I have two cloves of garlic that I chopped up that I'm going to add. I'll let those cook in for another minute or two. While that's cooking, I want to get my tomato chopped up. Uh, these were on sale this week for 99 cents a pound. And so this is about 75 cents worth of tomato. Mm. That garlic has only been cooking for around a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and it smells super fragrant. I'm going to add these tomatoes before that garlic has a chance to burn. All that moisture from the tomato has kind of deglazed the bottom of the pan and lifted up all of those bits where the onion was kind of like starting to caramelize on the bottom of the pan. And uh, this is just a little bit of broccoli that I wasn't necessarily planning to throw in, but it was in my fridge and it needs to get used ASAP, so in it's going. I have also got one can of chickpeas that I'm going to rinse and add. And then I'm adding a cup of white rice. Don't worry, we're going to add some liquid in here in just a minute. First, I'm going to get some seasoning in here, some black pepper, get a bunch of paprika. I would do onion powder, but I just ran out. That's on my grocery list, but we'll add some uh, garlic powder. And then I have about two, two and a half cups of chicken broth that I'm adding. And as soon as this comes up to a boil, I'm going to pop the lid on this and then I am not going to touch it. I'm just going to let that rice cook at a simmer. It should take about 18 minutes and it will be done. Most of you probably know that I love and adore and prefer my rice cooker, but I figured, you know, it's good for us to try something different and I just wanted to show how you could make a rice dish in one of these cast iron dishes. All right, let's see what this looks like. Give this a good stir and then taste that rice to see if it is done. If it needs to cook a little longer, I can put it back for like another two or three minutes and then check it again. I just burnt my tongue, but that rice is cooked enough. I'm going to turn the heat off and then I'm just going to let the lid sit on there a couple minutes. But this meal is ready to serve. I've also got some of my pork that I seasoned and put under the broiler for a little bit. This meal absolutely does not need pork. Like this is a full meal ready to eat on its own, but we're going to be pretty busy for the next few days. So I wanted to get that big pork shoulder cooked. That way I have several different dishes that I can make with that pork pretty quickly and pretty easily. Worst case scenario, we're really running behind. We can make a super quick side and have barbecue sandwiches. For me, I'm just getting a little drizzle of sriracha and then getting some of that crispy seasoned pork right on top and that is ready for me to enjoy. I only just got my first piece of enamel cast iron like a year and a half ago and it's safe to say that these are now a staple in my kitchen. Let me know in the comments what your favorite thing to cook in enamel cast iron is. As always, I hope that you all are eating delicious food and I will see you again soon.